Bedrock. It's meant to be unbreakable. Intended to be Minecraft's physical game limitation, it's been exploited on massive servers such as 2B2T to find players based locations through patterns unique only to specific Minecraft seeds. It's been bypassed in dimensions such as the nether to allow players access to an area where they can set up powerful farms. It's been clickbaited to hell and back on YouTube in absolutely pointless videos. But has it been broken? Well of course, and it's even been obtained in survival mode. You may be thinking that bedrock breaking methods are more of a modern Minecraft invention, with technical servers utilizing extremely complex methods of breaking bedrock over the past few years. But actually, bedrock destruction dates all the way back to early 2010 in Minecraft in their versions, and they sure are unique. Over time, as Minecraft updated and various features were added to the game, many interesting and one of a kind bugs allowed for the discovery of many methods of bedrock destruction. Today we talk about the strange and mostly unknown history of Minecraft bedrock breaking and how players have pushed the limits of the game, going as far as obtaining bedrock in survival mode. We've come full circle now. Oh and to make sure I don't get desperate enough to resort to making fake videos like this, be sure to subscribe if you like my videos. Thank you to that small percentage who already are. No pressure though. Bedrock was first added to the game in an unreleased version of Minecraft known as Water Test or Classic 0.0.12a Dev 2. This version of the game was never made public, with the only footage being on Notch's old YouTube channel. The footage right now is from a recreation of that developer version by Method, go watch this video for more info. Anyways, Bedrock was unbreakable and unobtainable in this version, surrounding the map entirely and also being at the bottom of the world. Bedrock was replaced with an infinite layer or sea of lava in Minecraft InDev 2010130 and we wouldn't get the bedrock we all know and love until Minecraft InfDev 2010017-1 released in June of 2010. The earliest method of bedrock destruction worked in all InDev and InfDev versions as well as all alpha versions of the game. By placing a dirt block below a piece of bedrock, hoeing it to make it into farmland and then placing a seed, it would instantly delete the bedrock like so. This method was discovered as early as December the 21st, 2010, with a video uploaded by Frozenfire1997 showcasing it. He discovered it as he was trying to make a small wheat farm in a cave because he got lost and needed food. Why he decided to grow wheat below a block of bedrock, we'll never know. This method worked because seeds take up a block above the tilled dirt block, and likely removed the block above it in these earlier versions of the game as an oversight or bug. This bug was patched out in beta 1.0. However, as this old comment states, it is impossible to get to the void with this method still, as that would require you to place a block in an impossible location, below bedrock. In Minecraft InfDev, there existed another exploit. On April the 13th, 2010, in Minecraft InfDev 2010413, large oak trees were added to the game, which contained these unique branches, as you can see here. If you grew a large oak tree from a sapling, the logs could replace any blocks adjacent to the trunk. You can force a large oak tree to grow by placing five stone blocks like so. That being said, it was very random depending on the branch generation and could only break bedrock on the sides. It was a very inconsistent method and is best used in the nether, which didn't exist until alpha anyways. But what's at least cool about this method is that it wasn't patched until Minecraft 1.8.1, meaning it existed for quite a few years. Minecraft Alpha 1.2.0, the famous Halloween update released on October the 30th, 2010, introduced the nether and with it, nether portals. Upon generating, a nether portal replaces a 2x4 area of the floor with obsidian. This also applies to bedrock. But it isn't so simple. When a nether portal looks to generate in a new area, it checks to see if a 4 block long, 3 block wide and 4 block high area is clear. If no such area exists, it would then look for a 4 block long and 4 block high area. That means by manipulating a specific area, you can force a portal to generate at a specific location. For example, placing buttons, torches or any other obtrusive blocks surrounding an entire area will force a portal to generate at the only location which is open, determined by you, the player. It's basically like making a perimeter for a farm where you make all the area surrounding the farm mob proof. Except in this case, we are making it nether portal proof. Then you can calculate where you need to build the nether portal at and can go ahead and destroy whatever bedrock you choose. The coolest thing about this method is that it still works in modern Minecraft versions and therefore is likely the oldest still functional method of bedrock destruction. As we enter later Minecraft beta versions, more and more unique Minecraft features would get added to the game, leading to a variety of interesting bugs and methods of bedrock destruction. Giant mushroom trees were first introduced to the game in beta 1.8 pre-release 1. 
During this period, including Beta 1.8 pre-release 2, mushrooms could also be placed on any block and bone milled into a tree. There was a glitch whereby whichever blocks you bone milled the mushroom tree on, you would turn to dirt, including bedrock. This meant you could grow a mushroom tree on bedrock and replace the bedrock it was grown on with dirt. You could use this method to break the bottom layer of bedrock in the overworld, thus gaining access to the void. As mentioned, this method was short-lived, as in Beta 1.8's full release, giant mushrooms could only be grown if they were placed on a dirt block. Headless pistons are an interesting method of bedrock destruction, simply because the method has been patched multiple times, yet managed to come back in various updates. The first headless piston method worked in Minecraft 1.0.0, released in late November of 2011. In a video showcased by JL2579, you could set up a redstone contraption that would force a piston to inherit the metadata of a liquid. Metadata is just like a variation or subtype of a block. For example, the old block IDs for various types of dye colors have metadata. By breaking a redstone torch with lava and instantly pushing the piston into the location the torch was, the piston's metadata was replaced with the lava, changing it into a headless piston that could break bedrock. This method was patched in 1.2.3. However, in 1.8, a new headless piston method was discovered. By blowing up an extended piston with a bed using this specific contraption created by Razeworks, you can break a piston head and thus get a headless piston. However, you cannot place these headless pistons facing against pre-existing bedrock blocks, meaning it was limited to breaking bedrock in the end portal exit, where you can predict the location of it generating after defeating the ender dragon, and thus place the headless pistons in advance. However, another method used in 1.12, showcased by Il Mango in Psycraft episode 123, utilized an automatic headless piston bedrock remover. Oh, and if you're confused about what's going on here, this is Project Cyblock, a project where the Cycraft server removed over 1 million bedrock in survival mode to play Skyblock. Pretty cool. Anyways, this method uses TNT to create headless pistons, and then more pistons are pushed in from the side and are tricked into retracting above the bedrock, thus removing it. I know, your guess is as good as mine. How it breaks the bedrock is quite confusing. If you're interested, Myren, who discovered many headless piston related bedrock breaking methods, has lots of explanatory videos on his YouTube channel. Anyways, moving away from pistons, for now, jungle trees were added to the game in Minecraft 1.2.1, and like the large oak tree glitch we talked about earlier, could also break bedrock with its branches. And what's cool is that this glitch actually works in some modern versions of the game, at least up to 1.13 anyways. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this one, because it's very technical and specific, but basically it can only break blocks above it, meaning it's only really useful for breaking bedrock to access the nether roof. In Minecraft 1.7.2, dark oak trees were introduced to the game. Now, I know what you might be thinking, another boring tree branch method, but trust me, this tree method is far more interesting than the others we've talked about. It was also one of the most used methods of bedrock destruction ever. By planting dark oak saplings below a dark oak tree, which had already grown like so, whenever you bone milled the saplings, it would grow the top of the tree at the bottom where the saplings were. If done in the right place, the oak blocks would delete and replace multiple blocks of bedrock in one go. Using this method, you could access the void as well as break bedrock from the top of the nether roof. It was however patched in Minecraft 1.8.1, but nonetheless, was one of the strongest methods of bedrock destruction in existence. And I promise you, that's the last tree-related method we'll be talking about today, until Mojang inevitably adds a new tree to the game, which also can break bedrock. The Flaming Arrow TNT method is probably the most unusual on this list. In Minecraft version 1.7, by firing an arrow into a TNT block and then letting it fall through lava, thus igniting it, you could let it land on bedrock and somehow break it. So what's even going on here? Well, sometimes when the arrow fell through the lava and landed on a block, the arrow entity still retained information from when it was attached to the TNT block, such as the coordinates of the block it was last on, and thus still thinks it stuck to that block. As you know, firing flaming arrows at a TNT ignites it, but not a normal arrow. So when the arrow passed through the lava and became a flame arrow, it remembered that it was attached to a TNT block. But now it's classified as a flame arrow and thus creates a prime TNT entity, which is basically just an ignited TNT. When this TNT entity is spawned in by the arrow, it replaces the block of bedrock, thus destroying it. So no, unfortunately we aren't actually blowing the bedrock up, even though that would be so much cooler. But rather we are just replacing it with a version of TNT in entity form. What's cool though, is that since the TNT still blew up, this method could be used to create a TNT duper. However, it was patched in 1.7.6. 
But never fear, while that awesome flame arrow method was patched in 1.7.6, an equally as cool bedrock destruction method was also introduced in 1.7.6, the same version where the flame arrow method was patched. This method utilized skulls, such as the Wither Skull, which was the only skull obtainable in survival mode at the time. If you placed a skull on the side of a non-full block such as a chest, it would literally just replace the block. And of course, you could use this to replace bedrock. This technique was very precise, once you got the right non-full blocks, to break the specific bedrock you wanted to. For example, if you wanted to break bedrock above the non-full block, you could use slabs, chests, signs, pressure plates, and more. If you wanted to break blocks from the side of the non-full block, you could use anvils, trapdoors, fence gates, and even some of the same blocks. We can assume that this bug works for a similar reason the seed glitch from Alpha did, but it was patched in 1.8. In Minecraft 1.8, beds had a unique glitch which allowed them to override any block, utilizing either a dead bush, grass, fern, or vine, which was right next to the block you wanted to replace, you could place a bed on top of it and override the block in front of it. Vines are the easiest of these options to use for this bug, as they can be placed on blocks other than just dirt, but are also the hardest to perform this glitch with. But not too hard, don't worry. Certainly less time consuming than actually attempting to mine a block of bedrock. This method was patched in Minecraft 1.8.2. One of the most known methods of bedrock destruction in the game is the dragon egg method. In Minecraft 1.8, blocks affected by gravity such as sand, anvils, and of course, the dragon egg would behave differently in lazy chunks, which were chunks not currently loaded. There was a bug with the dragon egg's code that meant that whenever a dragon egg fell on a block in an unloaded chunk, it would delete the block it fell on. That means if you set up a contraption that would drop a dragon egg in an unloaded chunk, you could activate it and thus break bedrock. This method was cool because while it could be easily used by the average player, technical players such as XCOM 6000 took the method to the next level, creating machines that would automatically drop dragon eggs in lazy chunks, allowing for large-scale automatic bedrock removal. This method was patched out in 1.13. The end crystal method is a method which only worked in the end, as this is the only place end crystals generate fire. First, place the end crystal next to the block you want to break, like so. Break the obsidian below the crystal so the fire disappears and thus will stop the crystal from blowing up when pushed by the piston. Place the piston to the side of the crystal like so, don't worry it will still push the end crystal as the crystal's hitbox is larger than one block. Then activate the piston and upon the crystal being pushed it will recreate the fire and thus replace the block like so due to a glitch. Pretty cool. This method is usable in 1.9 to 1.12.2 and could be used in versions before 1.9 but you could not place crystals in prior versions. So then, what current methods of bedrock breaking exist for modern Minecraft versions? Well, for Minecraft versions 1.14 to 1.17.1, there are various methods utilizing pistons once again. If the power source or item powering a piston is blown up right before you blow the piston up, the piston enters a glitch state for a short period of time. If you try to place a second piston in that same block the glitch piston is in, it can break a block depending on the direction the second piston is placed. Utilizing this design showcased in Rayworks video, you can effectively break bedrock like so. And this method, as I mentioned, is still working in modern Minecraft versions. Alright, so all the methods we've talked about today can break bedrock, sure. But that's boring now. What about actually obtaining a bedrock block in survival mode? Obtaining a usable, placeable bedrock item. Now, this method is very complex. I'll leave a video describing the entire process by Earth Computer in the description, but let me try to summarize how it was done on the Sidecraft server. First of all, they use an enderpearl cannon, which teleports a player to a location containing an end gateway. At this specific location, a structure is built which prevents the chunk from being saved by overloading it with data in books, similar to the chunk dupe method used on anarchy servers such as 2b2t. This means that when the chunk is loaded by the player, it is regenerated as if it was being generated for the very first time, including the end gateway. However, before that, a slime block is set in a place where the bedrock block from the end gateway would generate, and a block is lit on fire in front of it. When the player is teleported, they lag the server intentionally, preventing the player from generating and loading new chunks. Then, by destroying the slime block and extinguishing the fire, the chunk is updated, and they have tricked the game into thinking they broke a block of the end gateway, thus dropping a block of bedrock. A massive shout out to the technical Minecraft wiki page on bedrock breaking, which has documented various bedrock breaking methods throughout the years. Since some of them were so obscure, without this wiki's page, I would never have been able to showcase them to you all. But anyways, that about wraps it up for today. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed, thank you to that small percentage who are already subscribed, follow my Twitter and join the Discord. Thank you all so much for watching.